Hello and welcome back. Painting the Tour de France every stage, every day. Today is one of the big shakedown stages of the tour. <laughs> Just realized the bad pun there. Shakedown because today they are riding on to the cobbles that are famous from the race nicknamed the Hell of the North, Perry Roubaix. They'll be doing 15 sections of cobbles today. A lot of people griping about the fact that there's so many. So today, already, one rider has been eliminated, one of the GC riders, even before we got to the cobbles. You can see this painting right here. Richie Port crashed out with a broken collarbone. Looks like somebody hit a spectator. So if you ever go to the races, don't become part of the story. Stay out of the way. But anyway, so Richie Port crashed. A couple other riders went down. Another rider, one of the movie star riders, went out of the race as well. And this is all before they got to the cobbles. This is the group that got off the front. Many riders will jump out. The only thing worse than riding the cobbles is riding the cobbles with people all around you. So the cobbles are very rough. And once, once I finish this little painting drawing of these group, I'll move out to the bit of the scenery here. All these riders are grabbing a quick drink before they pull onto these cobbles. Because you're not taking a hand off the handlebars on these incredibly rough roads. In Richmond, there's a section of cobbles that they managed to get into the World Championships. A couple of sections, one that's actually a regular road, one that isn't. But anyway, so this rider right here is Chad Haga, who rides for Sunweb. He's one of the Americans in the race. His job today was to get out front and stay out there. So he's in the early break, and the point of that is so that when his race leader needs help, he's got a rider up there. You need somebody who's got a set of wheels, somebody who's got a wheel to follow, somebody who can help you out as the race progresses because the race is already broken into lots of little small groups on the road. So this is sector 14 that they're entering, and they count them backwards. So as you pull onto this, you know you've got to do this, this section and 13 more sections after that. The fans really come out for this race. I heard it described as Burning Man. And there are people out here who have been partying for days, just waiting for the race to show up. I always imagine, and I think I've seen riders, I mean fans that are so drunk that they're passed out on the side of the road and never even see the race they've been ostensibly waiting for, for days. There's a bunch of campers parked out along this edge here. So we're getting the sketch part done. And then we'll start laying in color here in just a moment. And these roads are just these little teeny almost goat track roads. Most of the roads are not not, cars are not allowed to drive on them during the regular year. They really only see <laughs> this kind of excitement maybe twice a year, once with Perry Roubaix, and then if the tour includes them with the Tour de France. Oops, forgot the title of the piece today. Call this fairly obviously a drink before the cobbles. Mm. 
Hmm. All right. So starting with the yellow, the color that's most easily polluted by other colors. So like when I work with my paint sticks, Shiva paint sticks, also made by this Richson Art Company that makes these watercolors, and actually how I discovered the company. Um, I always start with the yellow for that. In that case, I don't use pen and ink or any sort of, I paint, start with the yellow oil stick, paint stick, as they call them, the brand name. And uh, because just like the watercolors, the yellow pollutes the other colors the least, pollutes, alters, whatever word you want to use, changes. So these riders are grabbing a quick drink because, as I said, they do not want to uh, take their hands off the handlebars. Because these guys are riding... Oopsie. So here's a thing. I just made a big boo-boo there. But looking at what I need to put there, I may get away with it. Because I'm going to be putting a dark color. So again, by having done the paler color first, I should have less trouble making that correction. So we'll see how that goes when we get to it. So like I said, they're racing through the farmlands of northern France. So into the wheat fields here. Picking up just a little bit of a brown tone. I've got some sienna and some cadmium orange on the brush here. Sort of, yeah, that might be a little too strong. And see how I'm making again the brush strokes help communicate what it is we're painting. I'm painting. Actually, no, that orange is fine. And we'll get a little, pick up some of those darks that I've been using. Move it up here to my orange tones. Flick the brush a few times. So now I'm just doing a one-way stroke here. And it helps create the illusion of the wheat. I just had an opportunity to drive across the United States. Across the plains and just these ginormous long wheat fields were just stunning. And like this section of France, flat? Oh my god, it's so flat. <laughs> All right, just because I want to stick with the field here. So, of course, the weed is bright brown. Bright brown? Yeah, bright brown. <laughs> but along the verge of the road, there's some more wild grasses, so we're getting some of the green in here. All right. So see how I've already, you know, there are no rules, or there are plenty of rules, but it's the wonderful thing about making art. They're just, you know, there may be rules, but let's face it, they're really just suggestions. There are things I've learned that make it easier, help prevent problems, but, you know, it's the end result that matters. <laughs> nobody's going to see, well, I guess these videos will be around for a while, but nobody's going to see how you did it. They're just going to see what you did. All right, so now I'm bouncing back to warm color again. So hopefully, when I get to the blue of this uh, Groupama FDJ kit, I'll be able to um, cover up that mistaken flesh tone. 
Oops. So the French, of course, didn't get their stage victory yesterday on Bastille Day. But today, in just a few hours, they'll be playing for victory in the World Cup. A little behind schedule, so I may not get to see it today. All right. So that's... Oh, still not done. <laughs> let's get a little crowd color in here. In fact, let's go back and get a little yellow too. Not too much water there, so just pick it up, wipe it off, clean off the brush, we'll go to the light blue. One of the teams. that wear light blue or Astana came into existence to get a disgraced Kazakh rider back into the peloton so they had a team create it for him Venakurov he's still involved in the team although his team has had some doping issues he was disgraced because he was caught in doping. But the team now races clean. It's amazing. I mean, you still occasionally find somebody who's still trying to scam the system. But everybody talks about how dirty cycling is. The only reason they, people think that it's dirty is because they're actually catching people. So many other sports just aren't even trying. So when you hear those stories, just remember. The only reason you know that there's a cyclist who's doping is because they're doing everything they can to keep it from happening. All right, so here, so I'm going to lay the blue over that flesh tone. Now it'll move a little bit. Because until you seal a watercolor, it's always alive. May not be quite the word I want to use, but nevertheless, it's always fluid. How about that? So when you lay down watercolor, lay down water on a already existing watercolor, it will move around. So I always make a point of sealing these before I sh mail them anywhere. And the sealant is just a clear lacquer sprayed on doesn't alter the image at all. So you notice I've turned the, I hope they haven't moved it out of frame, but turn the paper sideways just so I can get this horizontal stroke of the sky. Pick up a little bit more water just because that started to set up a bit. And then I can move it. back into frame here. All right, now we'll get some of these darks. Start with Chad's kit here. Uh, Got to get a little more pigment. So my water to pigment ratio is too much water. So make a little more of my black. Again, using the green, dark green and a nice rich alizarin crimson purple. So we're closing in on being finished here. Again, all these works, all of my Tour de France paintings are available for purchase. They are at easiest ways to search the blog so if you're looking for a particular rider or whatever whomever particular 
phrase, you can search the blog most easily, and then every single blog post has a link to where you can purchase the painting on my website, which is gregleach.com, G-R-E-I-G-L-E-A-C-H.com. The blog is theartofcycling.blogspot.com, and I'll put, the, put those things in the comments as well. And then the paints, like I said, are Richson Art. Their website is R-I-C-H-E-S-O-N dot com. These particular watercolors are Yarka, St. Petersburg. Wonderful, rich color, clearly. I don't know if you can hear it, but I have a cat that's snoring away nearby. <laughs> Alright, now just a little indication of these cobble. They're very blue. There's this blue granite. So first we're going to lay in some color. And then a little more paint on the brush and just give a slight indication of texture. I almost put texture on the uh, Chad Haga's leg there. Alright, there's the piece. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. Be back for, uh, actually we'll skip a day because we have a rest day coming up. So I'll be back on Tuesday with a new painting.